The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! This This is Media Mash, a roundtable of Cowboys insiders dropping wisdom and offering sizzling takes on the current state of your Dallas Cowboys. Now your host, Nui Scruggs. Here we are, Media Mash. Sorry we're late today, but that's what happens. Duty calls, people in the locker room getting things done. We got Jacques Taylor here. We got uh, Clarence Hill. I'm Newey Scruggs. So, all right, Mr. Locker Room, what, what'd you uncover? What'd you get? <laughs> Mr. You Parsons know. was go, holding court late. Well, first of all, he was late. And, and he didn't start talking until after 245, 250. It's like, what are we doing here? You know, <laughs> the locker room was supposed to be over at 230. And he was taking his time and doing his thing. But he's healthy. He's feeling better, you know. And he certainly, you know, he uh, played – uh, against the Eagles with the flu, and he's feeling better. And, and, and Michael was, was good. He was typical, Michael. He, 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 was, he was really good. They just didn't want to talk about football. I asked him about Josh Allen and stopping Josh Allen. He started getting into Madden raids and talking about how he's jealous of Josh because <laughs> he's on the cover of Madden, and he wants to be on the cover of Madden and, and, and what he would do and how he would change Madden and all the other stuff. And then at the end, they were asking him about – uh, Gilmore and Cooks and their diets, and he's talking about how Gilmore, you know, they're so, you know, that's one thing that Mike and everybody talked about how Gilmore is really taught these kids how to take care of their bodies and eat right and stuff like that. They were in training camp one day, and Gilmore and Cooks would not eat what they were, you know, what the people in, in the um, cafeteria had for them. And they were, they cooked some noodles just by themselves not butter noodles not noodles with anything just just plain noodles and he was like man i don't know what they're eating i'm going to popeyes (laughs) (laughs) so (laughs) i'm gonna give me some popeyes you say that and it just makes me wonder could any of that been passed off from him hanging around tom brady you know the whole tb12 diet and all that well i mean i I, you know i know we give brady credit for everything i I don't know (laughs) And, you know, no, no, you know, no disrespect to question because we know he, he really just died. You know, these are. I just the, the, thought the, about the, it more like T.O. used to do what? Eat tuna fish with I, some. I don't know. The, he, he don't like T.O. So I don't know. I know. But I'm talking about a man who was dedicated he, to his he, diet he and his body, go, regardless of your, your, your personal, your your personal go, feelings toward, yeah, yeah, toward the player. But, but no, but he and, 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 and Brandon, they're really dedicated to their body and eating right and doing the right things. And I know Mike talked about that. Either today or yesterday, we talked. They were talking about Gilmore, and it's just how those guys just came in naturally from from the beginning, and and really made an impact on the locker room. Not just with their play, but with their leadership, and and talking to young guys about you know not just on the field but off the field stuff. But yeah, I don't know if he got it from TB12 or not. But we know that you know one reason why they were able to play so well, and even though people call them old, they, they, old can, they, they can still standard. they can still make plays because of how they take care of their body. This is true. All things can be true. I'm sure do you eat clean like that. I do not. And, 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 in fact, I don't even eat noodles, period. So I can't even get in that conversation he was talking about. I did like what he had to say about Josh Allen because I completely agree with that because they're not going to get the Josh Allen. The Josh Allen that, that's been turning the ball over, you're not going to see that on Sunday. You're going to see the Josh Allen that's been really good at home, that, let's be honest, guys get up for the Cowboys. He's going to play well in that game. And that's that's the Josh Allen that – Micah Parsons is preparing for, and they, I thought he made that pretty clear today. Yeah. But, but the good Josh Allen turned the ball over, too. The bad True. Josh Allen turned over three or four times. The good Josh Allen just turned over once. See, the really, really good Josh Allen is that one from two years ago in the postseason where they beat New England, they lost that tough game to KC that came down whoever had the ball last. And in those two games, I think he had, like, seven touchdowns, no interception. His his postseason numbers, is, it's 17 touchdowns, I think maybe two or three interceptions. He's been good in the postseason, but obviously this year he's turned the ball away. Now, your point is well taken because he's only been sacked nine times the last uh, eight games. So getting him down is yeah, a that's problem. Yeah, that's what I was trying to ask him. Like getting him on the ground, got to put the big in there. And then he just starts – Initially starts going on the tandem, I had to pull him back in. Can you that talk was about funny. <laughs> yeah, I said, can you talk about tackling Josh Allen? Because yeah. he's a load, you know, not as a passer, not just scrambling, but running the ball. Because, you know, the Cowboys have smallest linebackers. He, I think he can run up uh, a few linebackers. Now. I think this is the game, and it sounds basic, but it's true, where you have to be a fundamental tackler, which is you grab people by their legs, hold them up, wait for the Calgary. The, way you, the same way you approach Derrick King, when you, Derrick Henry, when you're tackling him. I think it's a similar approach when you're trying to get Josh Allen. So I think about, obviously, that in, in the Cowboys' um, challenges of dealing with quarterbacks who can move. We saw Josh Dobbs and we saw with, with Jalen Hurts last week. Obviously, you've got that. But the, the Bills add another component to 
when I think about how the 49ers have beaten the Cowboys uh, the last few seasons, uh, George Kittle's had good games. And Dalton Kincaid is a guy who's going to he's going to get five or six balls in this game. And how the Cowboys with their linebackers and second, and second level guys, how do they contain him? That's that's a great question. I think the I think their safeties have to play better than they have for most of the season. I thought they played pretty well the last game. They but, played well against the Eagles, yes. Yeah, but but the it's totality of curse thing, right? Yeah, but the totality of the season, I don't think that they've had they've played up to the standard of what, no, what because we were expecting. Uh, Donovan Wilson to me has been missing for most of the season. Yeah. Although he started to flash the last couple of weeks, so maybe missing camp with that injury, getting slow, come back. Maybe he's just yeah. now finding his rhythm. And he's really not a guy that's good in coverage anyway. He, no, his, I just his, mean his, as a his job blow you up after you catch right. it. <laughs> yeah, so I, I thought they did a good job on Dallas Garden in both games. You yeah. know, and, you know, and so you know, Kittle is a whole different animal. But Kittle got Debo and the, McCaffrey. There's a lot of things you got to worry about outside of Kittle, which would make that of a danger. Problem with uh, the Bills' offense is, you know, you 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 got a Diggs, but they don't really have another receiver you have to worry about. And, and certain Knox has come back and, and, and is a good uh, tight end. And, and the running back Cooks is, is they're they're getting the ball to him out of the backfield. I think it's, that's also going to be a challenge. For the linebackers, can they cover Cooks out of the back, backfield? So Mike McCarthy said to you, um, said to the media today, not worried about a playoff, no winning and making the playoffs. Coach speak. I mean, he said, "I'm worried. my focus is on winning the eleventh game," and it goes without saying that if you win the eleventh game, you make the playoffs. My fo- he said that from the beginning. Our focus is getting to eleven wins, and. And, you know, cause, you know, it's funny because the NFL put out the, all the playoff scenarios yesterday about everything that needs to happen for the Cowboys to get make the playoffs. And such and such lose. And the, the number one was beat Buffalo. You beat Buffalo, you're in. And so it's like the KISS principle. Keep it simple, <coughs> stupid. Yeah. Just beat Buffalo. Don't worry about the other scenarios. Just, just take care of Buffalo. You're in the playoffs. And then we'll talk about that next week. But we've said that about them all along. I mean, that's what Dak talks about. He says we're going to run our race. But if they just do what they're supposed to do, everything else will take care of itself. It's just in the past they haven't done what they're supposed to do. This year they look like their team that does what it's supposed to do. Uh, but we're about to see over these next three weeks. So in the past, though, he's always talked about 16-game season. When you get to 10 wins, that's when he would traditionally look around. Hey, let's see what the playoff scenarios are then. So you bringing that up, is this is the time when you bring it up. You're like, hey, one more win, you're in. Well, I, I will think say, I, that's before 17 games, though, right? True, true. So now, now it goes up. He said it goes up to 11. But my big thing is that. He's not going to say this to us, but he knows the difference between them winning the division this year and how much bigger of a deal that is as opposed to years in the past with how good they've been at home. And so you can sit there and win 13 games. You don't win your division. You're doing the same stuff you've done the last two years. You're starting the playoffs on the road, uh, possibly in Tampa Bay, just like you did last year. But if you can win the division, that's when this Cowboys team has a legitimate shot to get to the Super Bowl because then you would be able to play home games. But he knows right now where he's sitting. He It's going to be I tough will. for them to do that. Yeah. And so they're sitting here at a point where you're talking about here. All your hopes and dreams are there in front of what you'd like to do. And now you got a Buffalo team that's found a miraculous win in Kansas City that now they, <laughs> you know, the playoffs are not a guarantee. So they're they're in playoff mode right now. So They're the desperate home team. And normally I go with the desperate home team because uh, they play with a little more passion. They play with a little more urgency because it means more to them. Yeah, and, and let's be honest. They're not as bad as what the record is. They're a good team. We all know that they could have, should have beat Philadelphia if they're, right, if they're hitting the receiver on the right route in overtime and they, you know, the receiver ran the wrong route. You know, and certainly they beat Kansas City. I don't know if they lucked up on that win, but Kansas City is not who we thought they were. But this is this is not – just a 7-16. This is 7-16. What's the pedigree? Which has been a playoff, perennial playoff Super Bowl in the last three years. Has a lot of pride that's trying to get back there. So this is going to be a... And they got a, a great quarterback. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a tough <laughs> game for sure. I don't think they've even lost the game by more than maybe six. They've got two overtime losses. They've been in every single one of these games. Uh, yeah, if you think that this is going to be some 7-6 and six NFC team, then you're going to be sadly mistaken. This this is a talented team. This is, I mean, there's a reason Vegas has them as a 2.5-point favorite with how well the Cowboys are playing on top of it. Yeah, I mean, you, throw, you three are all going up there to Buffalo, and uh, the weather, luckily for the Cowboys, is going to be uh, be nice. It's, well, going to be well, it's not going to be nice. That's the funny you thing chew, about it. You want to chew that first? <laughs> Go ahead, that's, John. That's the, funny, that's the funny thing about it because we thought it was going to be nice. It didn't change already? It's, it's got go, some rain in It's going to be rain. It's going to be like yeah. 60% chance of rain now. You and know, Michael, was, M- McCarthy will tell was, you that rain and wind are the ones that he worries about the most. Yeah, that, that rain was Monday. 
Yeah, but but now it's Sunday. Now it's Sunday, right? Because it was it was supposed to rain Saturday and Monday, and not Sunday. Yeah, now, now it's up to sixty five percent chance. Now sixty five. You know, we we've been talking to Bucky, but like overnight, because we were just talking two days ago, I, yeah, about the weather and how nice it was going to be, and now it's going to be rain. What were you doing so there? That changes everything. Huh? What were you eating? A little, little gum I took out the Cowboys locker room. You know, oh. you know, you gotta get that. You gotta get that that gum out the training room. They do have a wide assortment there. I don't know. I don't take. But, but, but lies. Man, stop. Lies, lies. I don't. Lies. I don't. Stop. It's not lies. It's not. It's not lies. Jock, Jock, know Jock, been, Jock been taking gums in the training room since the nineties. Okay. You don't, don't want to be standing in that, those group scrums with bad breath. I don't exactly. I don't even, grab some gum. We don't remember a time back in the way in the mid nineties where Eric Williams reached into his locker. Turned around and handed the beat reporter a box of gum and said, "You should chew on this and let it marinate before you talk talk mm. to me again." Okay, it, wow. it was it was that's a true story. <laughs> it, it, it is a wow. true story. <laughs> those were the, why and, do you think and, we and, remember and, for twenty and those, years ago? And, and those guys were ruthless. And he <laughs> sounds like and it. this guy this guy was known for having bad breath. <laughs> And he made him. <laughs> he stopped him in his tracks. I can't wait for the break to find out who this is. <laughs> stopped him. Yeah. Turned around, pulled out the box, you and it was double mint. It was green. It that green box. Here, <laughs> marinate on. Let this chew on this. Let it marinate. If you follow me on Twitter. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you who it was later. <laughs> no, uh, no, we're gonna kill you, Pete. <laughs> but uh, that's how it no, was. No, no, seriously happened. But yeah, it, it's, <laughs> they were cold, man. No, they, 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 were cold. They, they were cold. But yeah, no, the weather's the weather's gonna be different. And, you know, and, and wind, rain, it could be a nasty game. I'm going to have to reevaluate my stance. Yeah, he was going to sit in the stands. With now. my dad, might tell my son, father, grandson, son, bonding time <laughs> for y'all. You got, you got to get your rain gear. You know, we were actually, we were, we were, we were talking to an uh, equipment manager, and he was just talking about how all the gear they're taking up there. And they're shipping the buses going, or the truck is going tomorrow. And, and yeah, they take everything. They're taking everything. All the way, <laughs> everything's going up there. They're yeah. not taking the bench because not Washington. No. They got good benches up there. They go, but they already ordered the bench for Washington. The cold bench from Washington, but uh, they're not taking a bench, but uh, they're taking everything up there just to be prepared. Now, what's funny is, I promise y'all, I talked to Mike McCord <laughs> yesterday, and it was like, oh, we're not really packing those two. And that's why I was like, things have changed quickly. Yeah. Sports is fluid. There you go. Great man once said, sports is fluid. Bucky's in charge of the weather. Oh, well, tell him to make it <laughs> bomb and sunny. Yeah. Bucky, Bucky's the one who he says, I get on my computer, watch all the weather forecasts, all the people. Yes, it was great. The other, you know, yesterday morning and this morning, it's going to be a 6% chance of rain. Dang. So, that could change some things. Here. No, that changed everything. If the that weather's bad, it's so. much more of a buffalo edge, and it's much, it's much more of a crapshoot. And especially considering what Mike McCarthy has preached and has turned this team into, and it's a dome team. I mean, there's no secret that there's a reason that during this winning streak, they haven't been opening any doors, any roof. <laughs> now you've got this weapon at kicker that you feel confident in from 60-plus. In the first quarter. You're going to be keeping that thing as close as possible. So that's going to be perfect environment, running on turf. Your team's fast. You can throw the ball all over the yard, score in 30-plus points. That, that's not how this game's going to be. I'm not saying it's going to be because when you, when it's raining and that, all I think of is that New England, the mo- most recent time when yeah. I think it was like 13 to three or something yeah, like that. I don't think it's going to be like that. I think it's going to be in the low 20s. That's but Jason Garrett coach team, this is a different coach team. This is okay. a different, different coach, different, different, different okay. coach. Yeah, we'll they take you all the details. We will see. Special teams, they got beat. Special okay. teams wise, you got, you know, they they going to take care of the details. You guys think there's any chance it's it's like uh, probably almost a year ago to the day will be the Jacksonville game where they get up by a decent amount, should win the game. 14. <laughs> different, different, different office coordinator. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you gotta get different everything. Coordinator decides right? to go three now. <laughs> different Healthy different offensive line. line. <laughs> different offensive line now. Different running back. Different, you don't have Noah Brown out there right. dropping pass and turning All right. pick sixes, okay? This is true. <laughs> Mike, different kick in December. <laughs> Could this be? Yo, you know, a funny thing, I, did, you know, I don't mean to interrupt you, but. But you do. Yeah, you do. You remember how great Mara was going last year? Yeah. I mean, was great. And then it went left. Any worries about that? Yes, yeah, Aubrey great is great. Could he get the yips at the end of the season like Mara? I mean, we we didn't see that coming from Mara. But see, we didn't Mara see had the history go, though. Thank you. You go yeah. back. There's, you, there's a dude you let go for a reason. And so when he came back, back. To, that's why he don't spend the blood. But he, he, he talked to all of the kicker psychologists. He got the, the mental guys working with him. He and was it was supposed, all it was good supposed to, to the It's supposed to be different this that's time. It's supposed to be different this time. Kicking is fluid. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, that's why. Like I said, you don't spend the block. Once you let him go, you let him go. Wow. So you don't think he's had any big kicks this year? Then you think they've all been easy? 
I sound personal. Anyway, um, you don't think he's had any no like, he's pressure had situations? No, 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 no. I agree, and I think. But you know, he's also missed some extra points, so he's yes. missed kicks. I yes. say Myers sure. had pre- no. I said, but Myers had made a lot of kicks and was we had it going last year, and then it went left. I'm not saying he hasn't had his kick, but I'm just saying that you know, just when you when you when you have those situations. You know, you don't have PTSD just a little bit. You know, not worry about it. I yes. kind of think, though. You, but you got to continue he... to prove yourself. I guess it's like the team. You have to. It's like we talk about. You have to continue to prove yourself. Just like even with Dak. He's like, yeah, where Dak going to have one of them 370 games coming up? Okay, but with kicker, though, outside of your guy in Baltimore and then that Venetary run, which team is, you know, kicker year proof. after year been like, oh, no, no, we're good at kicker. Like, that's well, part of the game. Dan Bailey was like that for about six, seven years. And then he got some butter in Kansas City's been good on this run they've been on. He's been they, they, uh, and that guy yeah. as a rookie and out of that, Coastal Carolina. And that and damn kick in, in Philadelphia. Yeah. Yeah, Elliot. That kick he made in, against the Buffalo a few weeks ago in the wind and yeah. the rain. Amazing. But, I mean, you know, what you want again – it's something you have to prove. Something that 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 that, that the next step, the next challenge for 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 the Cowboys kickers being able to do it outdoors in, in poor conditions. We yeah, haven't seen that this, yet. This, yeah, true. This, this will be, get a chance this week. This will be the challenge. And obviously, you got you, you guys get there early enough before the games, and you'll you'll, you'll watch him kick and see see what he can do. Um, do we have? Do we know when that rain is going to start? Is it going to start in the morning? Or is it- they said that, you know, again, we're talking to Bucky. He said at one point the guy said that yesterday said that they may hold off. It may get the game in. And then this morning they said it's going to happen during the game. Okay. So I got as of 2.30 on Sunday is when it's supposed to start. Yeah, during the game. <coughs> okay. And the game starts at 4. It's going to be pitch black. I did, I did like how I did like how Mike said it, that they're preparing for it to be a night game because of that. If, and if you're from yeah, the north, you're yeah. used to that, where it just starts getting dark at like 3 o'clock. Yeah, then give me no incentive to sit out there with my dad. <laughs> no, you should do that. It's your dad. How often are you going to Buffalo? You should do it. There's a reason why I don't. I talk to him on the phone all the time. <laughs> did you go up there in 15? I can't remember. I'm sure no, I did. Kellen Moore the started Kellen the Moore game, game. So. He didn't go to Buffalo. No, go. I didn't. What, what you about, remembered it. You didn't remember What about the Romo game, the five interception Oh, game? I remember that okay. one. Okay. No, I was there for that one. I can't remember. Yeah. What, what was the Kellen Moore game? 16 to 6. It was not very. It was awful. Yeah. 2015. It was, it was at the end of the year. I don't think you uh, went because I thought you, I don't think you went because uh, Anthony Lynn was still up there. Yeah, no, I didn't go because I didn't, I didn't yeah, remember I think anybody that. who had a reason not to go didn't go. <laughs> you know, it was like, yeah, yeah. The season was over. It was like, what am I doing? Yeah, yeah, I didn't go to that one. So, all right, let's take a break in here. When we come back, shout about the power rankings, what people think about the Cowboys across the league. We'll do that with Clarence Hill, John Shoulder, John Jack Taylor, New York the Media Mash, right here on DallasCowboys.com radio. In the break. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. <laughs> but the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Don't put off getting your oil change, Dallas. Take 5 Oil Change, a proud partner of the Cowboys, is faster than you think. There's no appointment needed and no waiting room. Yep, you heard that correctly. Take 5 is so fast, you don't even have to get out of your car. You can take advantage of Take 5's fast, friendly, and simple service at any of their locations across the Dallas area. And remember, at Take 5, you stay in your car because they're faster than you think. Take 5, the official oil change of the Dallas Cowboys. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites and a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the playmaker at getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code COWBOYS Cowboys VIP. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code Cowboys VIP. They say champions are remembered, but legends are never forgotten. United Ag and Turf offers a winning lineup of John Deere equipment built to tackle any challenge on and off the field. Legendary John Deere tractors, combines, residential mowers, commercial mowers, compact construction equipment, gator utility vehicles, and a full line of golf and sports turf equipment. United Ag and Turf, the official Ag and Turf equipment supplier of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit unitedagandturf.com to find a location near you. Back, back, back to back, Media back. Mash. Here we are. 
Meaty Mash right here on DallasCowboys.com radio. We have Jean-Jacques Taylor. Come on, man. Hold up the book, man. Hold up the book. Christmas time is coming. Everybody get your book, Coach Prime, Deion Sanders, and the Making of Men by Jacques Taylor. Yeah, there it is right there. So. Okay. So, it's Jean-Jacques Taylor. Amazon everywhere you go, so make sure you go ahead and pick it up. Be a great Christmas gift. We got John Machado of the Athletic, and we have Clarence Hill of the Fort Worth Star Telegram. Yes, Clarence, what do you have for the, us? The injury yes, report is out, and and uh, Michael Parsons fully recovered from the flu, but it looks like Gilmore, Cooks, and Tober got a little, little taste of the flu now. Gilmore, Cooks, and Tober, the two old dudes eating noodles. <laughs> yes. got, to, got, to, got the flu now. Yes, and Matt, well, let's go. Practice in full today. He's designated oh for a return. And, uh, yeah, so there you go. <laughs> go ahead, Joe. What do you think about that? <laughs> I'm not, let's talk about the offensive line. If you want to do this, let's, you know, you bring yeah, up well, that. Let's go on the offensive line. Yes. Yeah, I mean, but part of their success, you know, outside of Dak throwing the ball and then the running game improving was his offensive line is, is starting to gel. And, and you know, Tyron Smith and, and Tyler Smith, you know, are as good as any left side in the NFL, and and, and certainly uh, Terrence Steele is getting better, and and, and Zach is, is is Zach, and and then that you know the running game has played well the last three or four games, and and the offensive line has played a key role in that. I think they'll need it again this week, which if, if the right, so yeah, yeah, it's not lost on me how you look at those top three guys in the MVP race, and you're just like, okay, Brock Purdy, Jalen Hurts, Dak Prescott, all playing well, but if you just take away Trent Williams or Lane Johnson or, or Tyron Smith, how quickly that, that stuff changes them. And they they don't get the – they probably don't get the recognition that they deserve. But as great as Dak's been, man, you give tons of credit to Dak, CD, Mike McCarthy. But you think it's just a coincidence that this is also happening when that offensive line has been the same five week after week after week like that? There's something that hasn't happened during yeah, the because... entire time McCarthy's been coached? No, because the point that you made is, look what happened when Trent Williams and Debo didn't play. San Francisco just went 0-3. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason why guys make 20, 30, 40 million. And Washington has never recovered from letting Trent Williams go. I mean, that, that thing's a turnstile over there, and you see the guys are sacked on, on the regular. Um, do we think Tyron makes the Pro Bowl this year? That's a good question. Uh, if he finishes out the season, yeah. I do. Because the Pro Bowl comes out, what, next week or two weeks? top three tackles, right? The, the, well, problem, is one the, of the them. problem is. Lane is one of them. Well, Lane's right, right tackle. Well, I forgot. The, but the problem yes. is, is that Sewell is really good, mm-hmm. and Darasol is really good in Minnesota mm-hmm. and Detroit. And, you know, Sewell in, in Detroit might be the best one. But Sewell's on right the right. Yeah. Sewell's on the right. I, I just think they pick tackles in the Pro Bowl. Okay. I don't think they do right to love. I didn't think they pick tackles, but. But but it's going that 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 Pro Bowl tackles about you know you want to get named but you want to play in the Super Bowl so you know you you, you know you you'll see but uh, no Tyron is playing as well as any you know in the NFL. So you start practicing. But your boy but your boy in Detroit is 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 is, is really playing well. And, and, and Minnesota's he's really playing well too. It's 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 a tough choice. I mean there's some great candidates out here in the NFC for the, for the Pro Bowl. There's, there's no doubt about that. But you know how it is when there's any cowboy in there and it's oh no close, the, the fan vote right no no there's no doubt he got the history and he got the number there. But uh, yeah, it's, it's 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 again. Your boy in Detroit is really playing well too. Yeah. So power rankings, Pro Football Talk: San Francisco one, Baltimore two, Dallas three, Philly four, Miami five. Bleacher Report: Niners one, Dallas two, Baltimore three, Philly four. USA Today: 49ers one, Cowboys two, Baltimore three, Philadelphia four, KC five, and Yahoo has got it. San Fran one, Dallas two, Baltimore three, Philly four, and the Bills five. Thoughts? I, I think I would, that's right on. Yeah, I wouldn't argue with that as of today. You know, it's funny coming into the season, everybody thought was the AFC was the strongest conference. Mm-hmm. You got all these great teams, okay? You got Kansas City, you got Buffalo, you got Cincinnati. And the quarterback. Baltimore and all the quarterback. All the, it, with, clearly with Aaron Rodgers right. coming to the Jets and the NFC was like you had two good teams. No, but right yeah. now, right now, the two best teams in the NFC, the two best teams we're playing right now, playing the best football right now, are the Cowboys and the 49ers. You know, Baltimore has a great record, but they struggled against a team that the Cowboys blew out. Baltimore is always a little bit offensively challenged, which makes you quit with the entire buy And They always, I mean, they can win, and they do win, but they always, the offense is always shady, even though Lamar Jackson's great. And he's playing well, but the defense has been getting up a lot of yards, too, and a lot of points. The Dolphins, for me, are the, are the outlier because of the fact that they put up big numbers, and they're the fun team, and people talk about them, but they're not really battle-tested. 
you know, a lot of these other teams you talk about, they've been going to the playoffs multiple years. I just, I, I look at the Dolphins and I don't see a team that all of a sudden you just think they're going to make this run to the Super Bowl. I mean, from an offensive like line Cowboys standpoint, you got, you got Connor Williams, <laughs> uh, former the Cowboys, he's out. Mm. So he's out for the year. Toron Tor- Tor- Armstead, offensive. They've got, basically, they've got. They're missing three. Right. They've got big issues in the offensive line. And, oh, by the way, Tyreek Hill on that last possession didn't even go out on the field for Miami. So they're hurting right now. And who knows who the Cowboys will see in two weeks against them, but it's definitely not the team that put 70 up on Sean Payton and the Broncos. No, because it's – Yeah, but they weren't that they weren't team two weeks later when Buffalo put 50 on them and they lost – and they <laughs> only put up 20. I mean, that's the problem with them, though. I mean, they did put 70 on the Broncos. The Broncos don't look like that team that gave up 70 anymore either. They, they got that thing turned around. But it was just two weeks later when, 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 when Buffalo put 50 on them, they only scored 20. Yeah. And they had all their guys. Yeah, so I, I just think that Miami is a uh, – I mean, we just talked about offensive yeah, cute line. little team. Offensive line. If you, you don't have it, it's a problem. Texas Tech. Yeah, they're good time boys. Uh, <laughs> why do you go out to Texas Tech like that? No, I'm saying when, when they, no, we they put up Texas a lot of Tech. points, they were a cute little team, but you couldn't take them seriously. Texas Tech is not the kind of team you marry. They're the kind of team you go out and have a good time with. Let's go out to the park and Ole play Miss. And have a good time. Yeah, it's a good time team. Until they prove, like until they guy. win that's something. Not the Buckeyes. Guys. Until they win something that day, I'll take, take old Miss type. Yeah, yeah. put up a lot of points. Yeah. Alabama, that's the kind you take hold of mama. I'd like to marry yeah, this, man, this that's team that's right that's here. That's all we're saying. They're going to pr- no. protect, provide for me? <laughs> no malice in this <laughs> process. No malice in We're just keeping it real. Yeah, that's what we do. Uh, <laughs> Michelle would love that line. He's, he's know, actually daydreaming that. That was good. Um, I still, I still wonder though. I was talking about this with somebody earlier. Still wonder though if this Cowboys team can go on the road and beat Philly or beat San Francisco. Was and it I think Calvin Watkins next... of the Dallas Morning News. <laughs> it was yeah. not. And and I, and I think it'll be interesting because we're going to get to see a little bit of these next two weeks what they look like on the road like that because it's going to be tough for them to win the division. And so are they the team that can finally get over the hump on the road? I, I I'd be very confident if they locked up home field throughout. But having to win multiple big games on the road a, a, is that different? Can they do it? Because if they can't, then this season's no different than last season. No, season and, and and those points are valid. I will say that they lost at Philly, but I think as we see now, they were the better team. They really could have won that game by a couple of inches, you know, you know, on the goal line and foot out of bounds. That's that's a whole different game, and and I don't think Philly pretty did. solid weather that day. Huh? Pretty solid weather, considering yeah. if you go there yeah, in January, yeah. what it might be. Yeah, no, it'd be different. But I I don't know that you, this Philly team is, is we saw and seen the last couple of weeks. And I think we've seen most of the season is was not the ten and one team of of, of last year. Jalen Hurts is not playing the MVP level he was playing last year. The defense is one of the worst in the league. They may to say yeah the Cowboys have a tougher stretch schedule down the stretch, and the Eagles have an easier schedule on paper. I don't think winning that Seattle is going to be so easy for this team, and I don't know if getting over the Giants twice is going to be so easy for them. And, the, the way they're playing, it's yeah. all I'm saying. Based on the Eagles team we've saw and seen the last two weeks, the way they're playing, because they they and got, you got a lot of confidence, in Devito now with the, with the Giants to be able to win one. I of those think games. it's just that uh, they playing like they don't just, care. Yeah, and so they having fun, and they yeah. when when there ain't no pressure. They just haven't. They just haven't yeah, played. But it ain't even about the Giants. Just about the way the Eagles are playing, though. The Eagles have not played well. They have not no. looked good. Even when they the games they won, they were trailing and and we gave them credit for winning in the end and things happening right for them. And, and but they have not played well for much of this season. And I think it caught up to them the last two weeks. We'll just see. say the Cowboys just need to do what they do. And if they if they well yeah they, they need to prove one win on road for sure yeah but if they just do what they do then the wins and losses will take care of themselves if they play their best football and then if they're playing their best football I don't think outside of uh, San Francisco they necessarily care about going anywhere yeah, that's that's really the team that's the team San Francisco's the team San Francisco's right. the best that, team in the league by far I that, think that is, that yeah, is but that's I, the team that I'll, I'll even take that Eagles team for, on Sunday you take that game you put it in in Lincoln Financial in January. And like, just say something happens, like, oh, I don't know, they don't fumble three times and lose it. That's going to be a hell of a ball game. It's it's still going to be tight. But, but I have confidence they can win there. 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, more I, than San Francisco. Yeah, 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 yeah. San Francisco, yeah, yeah. we're like, uh-huh. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that. That, no, but but they, them absolutely. going to Philadelphia is not, if they have to go to Philadelphia, that's not some, ooh, boy. I was okay, I no, agree with you on you that, can go, yeah. You can go there and win. Yeah. And You've won and, there in the past, so and, that's not a, that's not an issue. And, and, San Francisco is the bully on the block right. who's beating you up, okay? And that, right. You know, you went up there, you, you you get the ball to six, and you shot yourself in the foot and lost that game. But San Francisco just went in there, and they just, they just paddled you all day they long. You told you to go home. Then they come to your place, pull out a beatbox, and just do the same thing. So, Where, where's everything related to your girl these days? I'm just trying to forget. I like it. I think it, it brings a new dimension to the show. I'm just trying to relate to the people out there. Out there. I'll, I'll, be, I'll, to people out there. I'll be honest with you. I miss doing the show with you guys. I really do. You know, y'all think we laugh so hard. <laughs> you know what? Uh, they don't tell her who's watching. This is a real good time. Go well, In the show, uh, we got a Another show following up. Our producer Chris Beams got to get ready for that. So, Clarence Hill, you thank you very much. Uh, from from Star Telegram, John Michaud, make sure you're reading him over the Athletic. And the author showed a book one more time. John Jack Taylor, Coach Prime, oh The Making of Men. Don't get it's a riveting read. Uh, Don't get yes, my tires yes, cut. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody tires been cut. They're playing that Carrie Underwood. I'm Louis Scruggs. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!